All I want is chop, bro. I just wanted to chop. Okay, that's all I want. I don't care. I don't care how much it costs. I don't know why I'm hitting it. I just wanted to chop. That's it. I just want to burp, 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 burp. Is that what you want? Is that, is that what? You want the chop? Do you want the chop? Do you want the chop? Where are you going? Where, where, where are you going? Where, 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 where are you going? Okay, don't mind the washer machine the noise in the background. But today, what I'm going to kind of briefly touch over everything, camshaft, camshaft selection. If you're the kind of person that only wants to chop and only cares about the chop, which is like 99% of you guys, you may learn a little something. Okay, you may learn a little something. So, this is kind of just going over the basics. Pretty much what I know, what I would like to share for people to know. And for the most part, it's not like I know more than what other people are knowledgeable about. No, you know what? No, I'm gonna stop there. Okay. Uh, oh, geez. Sorry. All right, I know what I'm doing. Okay. Not expert, but I know what I'm doing. So, here. When it comes down to the basics of a camshaft, all right, you have base circle which is the bottom of the cam, where essentially lift or, or uh, yeah, lift of the actual lifter doesn't change. I know it looks here that it does, but it's just base circle. So for X amount of degrees of camshaft rotation, it doesn't change. You have the opening ramp and you have the closing ramp. You can also refer to it as the opening flank, closing flank. So the biggest thing and the only reason some people do want to cam is because they want the overlapped chop. And this is this is here is what it comes down to. So this is what I'm going to compare it to. Stock CTSV. Yes, it's supercharged. You can also look at it as a stock LS3. I said before, this is not a Mustang based channel. This is I like everything racing. So it can be B18, K24, whatever. Stock CTSV. Everyone knows, idle quality is great. You go ahead and put a set of headers on it, whatever exhaust you want on it, it's gonna purr and sound real good. It has a very wide power band for stock. So, and this is why. If you have a wide lobe separation angle, LSA, I didn't write LSA here because the LSA is what's actually in the CTSV, but lobe separation angle, wide equals a better quality idle. If you have a lower low lobe separation angle idle quality suffers which is where you get the overlapped controlled chop this is pretty much what it is here lobe separation angle all right a camshaft you have a camshaft for every lifter one through eight actually 16 or whatever and take exhaust on every every valve or every cylinder and this is what it is right here the point at which exhaust intake and exhaust overlap between the two and the actual intake valve and exhaust valve are open at the same time is called lobe separation lobe separation angle you can measure it now a stock LS or LSA will usually be in between for this specific example it's for LSA it's 122.5 degrees of lobe separation angle great idle quality the engine runs smooth I'm not going to try to get too much into the weeds about it, but these camshaft specs, you can find them all. Like some of this stuff I found on someone's website just to have, for my examples, here to show you pretty much what you're actually going to be doing to the motor. So let's move forward and show you a very common setup that people do. They have a stock LSA. They, not, not to say for budget reasons, because some people do have a budget, but it's kind of hard to say that you have an LSA, but you're on a budget, you know? I mean, I have a Mustang, I'm on a budget, so I don't, you know, people say, oh, you bought a Mustang, bro, it's good for like 900 wheel. All right, well, you know what, life happens, so, yeah. So if we look at this aspect of it, stock LSA. Now, to kind of break down the numbers of what cam actually means, intake, exhaust. The intake valve is open for 198 degrees of crank rotation exhaust same thing intake lift on the cam the actual lobe 492 thousandths of an inch almost half an inch and 480 thousandths on the exhaust a little bit less now 
lobe separation, the difference in angle that the intake and exhaust valve open, 122.5. You have great idle quality. The car, car runs smooth. Now, if you look at it and find out why you put a stock LS9 out of a C6ZR1 in there, you get 198, 211, 216, 230. Intake lift and exhaust lift both increase. Same lobe separation. This cam will essentially go right in and you'll be fine. I don't know what's all entailed. You may have to do a rocker change. I'm, I'm not, I didn't dive too deep into that kind of stuff. I'm not deep in the LS world as it, you know, as a, you would say. Or maybe when I get this 5.3 in my caddy. So by doing this, you get another 13 degrees that the intake valve is open, 14 degrees for the exhaust valve to be open, 70 thousandths more lift, 78 thousandths more lift on the exhaust. Same lobe separation. So you, you are making considerably more power or you're having the availability for air to be in there for a longer period of time or more air to come in during the same period of time and you get more power more power this is the stock gm part I, I was when i looked up the spec i was actually surprised that these numbers were as big as they were and this is stock you can get a new ls9 cam for like i don't know not even a hundred dollars whatever so it's kind of hard to find out the exact specs of certain cams from like BTR or whatever the case is because there is a lot that goes into making up a, a desired cam profile for your build. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into it. But for example, I have here a LS1, LS6 cam. Off the back, you can see 239 and, oh, I forgot that. I think it was 240. 239 and 240. Considerably, even between these two, even for a LS9, you're forcing these valves open a lot more. This is the LS1, smaller displacement, so 529, 529, but still bigger than the LSA. Lobe separation is 110. That alone right there, you're going to have a poor idle quality. But when you do lower the LSA, you're going to have an increase in capacity for torque that this cam profile is designed to make. So with a cam selection you're essentially moving your power band to a certain desired area high idle speed not that much low end torque for example we're going to put here like a ls3 camaro you're going to be maybe 380 390 at the tire bone stock okay then if you look at the dyno graft after you, after you do a set of bolt tones and cams in it you know a, a 440 isn't too much of an aggressive cam for that car but you can see in the dyno graft it's starting to creep up here so you're sacrificing a wider band for a specific desired range the lsa and the ls9 everyone knows those things you, you put a nice heads and cam package on it you essentially don't sacrifice anything it's it, it's going to be increased across the entire board this here is solely used for an example now, like I said, there's a whole bunch of things to, things to consider when you put it in the cam. You have crank center line, cam center line, okay? You have cam core diameter, how big the cam core actually is. You have canteen of the valve. This picture I have here, the dotted line is the original angle that the valve is inside the cylinder head. You want to cant the valve. Canteen refers to the actual, you're canting it. You, so essentially, you're creating a bigger surface, a, a potential bigger surface area to put a bigger valve in into the head to get more air through it. You have three, four, and five angle valve jobs. That actually, you know what, I'm gonna use it for this right here. I'm gonna use this as, as an example. This would be like the bottom of the, the of a valve, right? It looks like the air would flow right over it, but if you look into the actual machining process of a valve, and you can look into like Steve Morris or Nelson Racing or whatever the case is, and they put like three cuts into the metal to, to, so that the air will flow more smoothly. You could put even to four valves or even five to smooth the airflow over the valve. Even that you got to take into consideration when buying a cam. Are you going to be NA? Are you going to be nitrous? You know, and that's why I have here, listen to the people that are tuning your car. Me, I, I, I know a, a, a good amount, so I'm pretty sure I would, I would be okay in, in selecting a regular cam that I want to put in my, in, in the 5.3. But 
if you're out there and you want expert advice, follow the expert advice. And this is why you're starting to see shops that don't want to tune someone else's car that they put in because you you bring these parts hey i bought, I bought this cam and i bought this and i bought this and I, I paid someone to put it in you take it to the dyno and the car runs like ass they don't want that because it makes them look bad because oh you got a heads cam so and so and you only made 400 wheel or the car didn't even dyno because someone else put it together you know, the, the, I'm not calling out anyone that in here or, or anyone in my world in particular, but this is just something that goes on the, all over the place. So when it comes to cam selection and, and, and design and whatever the case is, there is a lot that you have to consider before, you know, biting the bullet and getting something. Listen, listen to the people that are tuning it because these people already know and they've done their R&D on what works and what doesn't. Also, you know, Listen to the actual manufacturers. So what we're going to do with the Volvo, with the 5.3 we have, we're going to keep it relatively basic. We put a good set of valves in it. Nothing oversized, nothing crazy. Good set of rods and pistons. And we're going to call them. We may call up Texas Speed and be like, hey, you know, give us a, a decent cam that's not really going to put us on the threshold of breaking stuff. But it will give us a good power band and give us out, at least get us out of there and get us out and enjoy the car for what it is and then start our learning curve. Frankenstein, AFR, Comp Cams, Mast. You can call them. Be like, hey, I got this, this, and this. What do you recommend for NA? They're going to ask you, okay, are you going to be road coursing it? Or are you going to be drag racing it? Because us, at least in my world, where what that thing do from a 60, you know, you're, we're only going to be living up here in the top end of the world. So one thing I, I do want to add to that too, that if you are going to suffer on idle quality, you may have to increase your idle speed which is something that we had to do with my friend's Cadillac. What's up, buddy? You just woke up or something? Jeez, long night? All right, sponsored by Gatorade. Not really, I wish. Stay right there, don't go nowhere. All right, so to show you, oh my goodness, look at all this pollen. All right, record pollen here. So the way it works, it's very simple, all cars are the same, and this is my Mustang. Booster. Vacuum line out over here to the manifold. I got no clamp on it because I I don't care about life. I really oh, oh. so vacuum is what's actually being supplied to the back of the booster to help you pull the brake pedal down. When you're when you have a fluctuation of engine vacuum that you, on a good motor usually between 15 and 18 if you're going down below 15 15 inches of vacuum the more you apply the pedal or the more frequently you, you apply the pedal at idle you essentially cause a small vacuum leak because you're moving the booster so not to get too crazy in how a booster works but imagine this brake booster line is the gluck gluck 3000 and your brake pedal down there is uh your schlong you know what i'm saying so vacuum here it is pulling it is helping you and assisting with the brakes this is why this is called a brake booster so there's that and that's why when we were in teddy's car and um we're going through the through the drive through and you, the, the more you press the pedal the more frequently you press it because this car does have a, a good set of cams in it if he catches it at the right moment he will cause a car to stall because at that specific moment the engine makes the least amount of vacuum least idle qual least preferred idle quality and then the car dies pretty simple because I, you do notice that if once you put a set of cams in the car the car is making less vacuum and at times you know it may not idle at the 650 rpm it did before you may have to raise it at 800 and around town when you're hitting the brakes and you hit the brakes too much you are going to cause it to stall and i'll show you here why in a second but that's pretty much it that I wanted to get to with this. So I hope you like it. I mean, I could dive forever in, into all this kind of nonsense that's going on here. I, I like learning this kind of stuff. And it, the whole engine works as one piece. The one does, it all is one machine. And when it all works together and you put a good combo together, there ain't nothing out there that's gonna stop you. So more to come.